Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor. This is Twinkle, my Bedlington Terrier. I'm doing a two night session on a gravel pit and normally I wouldn't take Twinkle with me but this particular place does allow dogs and it's overrun with rats. In fact, a few years ago I woke up one night to find one on the pillow next to me. So the opportunity to bring Twinkle is very welcome indeed. I've been here a couple of hours or so, got the bivvy set up, pulled a marker float through the swim. I have fished this swim before, but it's good to go over it again when it's been a year or so since you were last year. I have baited up, uh, put the rods out, but I will actually cast them out again before dark. So, two nights, hopefully I can get amongst the fish. The water temperature is 9.4, so I am hopeful. It's not an easy water, like gravel pits, it doesn't give its fish up easily, but when it does, they can be good fish. And I probably, if I'm about to make a prediction, will catch two or three fish, but they will be good ones. So I'll be happy with that. I had a good night's sleep, not what you want when you're fishing though is it? Time now to recast in the morning so I'm going to show you my rig. I'm fishing a, a one and a half ounce inline lead which is pulled into the swivel there so it creates a bolt rig effect. I'm fishing a back lead, I like to pin it down on the bed of the gravel pit. Just a, a short hook length of about eight inches it's mono because I'm, I'm not fishing for carbs, so I'm not into all the, uh, the stuff that goes with that. <clears throat> so just a, a simple mono hook length. But I am fishing a, a, a pop-up. You can see the, the lead there. So that creates a nice, uh, nice pop-up bait. Fishing a size 6 hook. And then I'm going to put my baits on and I'll show you what I'm fishing with. As you can see from the shot, there are thousands of these insects all around. I've seen my first sand martins of the year, there are 40 of them and plenty of winged insects to feed on as you can see. My first bait is a 10 mil pop-up boilie. It's pineapple flavoured, sits just nicely off the bed of the gravel pit, hopefully will entice a fish or two. And on the second rod I'm fishing rather unconventionally really, the uh, corn there actually is an artificial piece of corn and below it is a piece of rig foam that I just trimmed to look like a piece of corn. So both artificial baits, the corn and the rig foam, dip them into Scopex. And amazingly, I've had, I've had good tench on this particular setup. I've had tench to eight pounds, well over eight pounds on this particular setup. The first time I fished with artificial baits, it, it didn't feel right, I must admit, it didn't feel right. But I was actually forced to do it because I was getting so many uh, sucked baits from smaller fish that I needed, particularly fishing at distance and all the rigmarole involved in casting out, I needed to be able to put something out knowing that it would stay there till a good fish came along. So I decided to go for this uh, setup. It didn't feel right as I said, but it worked. And that's what really counts sometimes as anglers. In fact, I would say all the time as anglers really, we need to think outside the box. It's the uh, middle of the day, well, lunchtime. And I've just had a, a run on my sweet corn Rod, well, artificial sweet corn. Anyway, fancy that. Nothing at night. But I've got a fish in the day. It's a, it's a tent, as I expected. 
excellent in the net. Got the fish on the mat, as you can see. There's a lot of gravel around, so we need to do that. We'll fancy that. I'm just about to get the hook out, and it's come out in the net. That was close. There it is. Beautiful gravel pit tent. I've mixed my ground bait up for the final night. As you can see there, brown crumb, dead maggots, and sweet corn, you'll probably see the odd piece of corn in there. Got those ready, and then I'll be catapulting them out. The, a big catapult, round bay catapult. It's now 9.30 p.m. We've just had an amazing storm. The wind was, was really strong. In fact, it still is now, but I'm in my bivvy and I'm, and I'm tucked in away from it and the rain was bucketing down. Pod went over as well, so I've had to get out and recast. It's so windy that I, I, I couldn't um, cast properly. I was casting into the wind, so I'm hopeful that the baits have gone in the right place or roughly thereabouts. If the wind drops down later in the night, I will definitely Put the baits out again but as for now there's not much I, I can do it's like the sea out there it's that choppy but these are the conditions you have to put up with sometimes hopefully as I say the baits are in roughly the right place and I'll have a fish to show for it but I would prefer for the wind to drop a little bit so I can recast them it's now 11 o'clock and the pod went over again the rods went over one of them actually ended up in the water this time and I've had to take my chair and tie it around the bottom of the peg. It was already pushed in and, and pegged in anyway, but it just wasn't sufficient. And I've taken my water bottle that's got about 12 and a half, 13, 14 litres in it and uh, put that on top as well. So hopefully that's the end of that particular problem. I've cast the house open that the baits have gone in the right place. Um, my expectancy level has, has gone to um, hopeful I think really just knowing that the baits are in the water and uh, hoping that they're in the right place well let's see shall we well, amazingly I'm into a fish the wind has dropped off a little bit well, I didn't know where my baits were obviously one of them at least in the right spot Excellent. It's the morning now, time to pack away. What a night that was. The storms and the wind and the rain coming in. You wouldn't believe it sitting out here at the moment. It's quite cold though. I've had to put my all-in-one suit on for the first time. But the sun's up and shortly we'll forget about the night we've just had and it'll be another bright sunny day. That's what's been forecast anyway. Check out my website. If you've enjoyed the video, there are lots of archived videos that you can access from there. Also articles as well. I write a weekly article that accompanies the video and the articles go back to the summer of 2003. So lots of stuff to uh, read on fishing. I'm sure as anglers we all love to be out at the water's edge but sometimes we can't and the next best thing is to get our heads into a, a good article or a, a video or something like that that really keeps us on our toes and fired up for our next fishing trip. So check out the website, lots of stuff on there and I'll see you next week.